What's going on YouTube? Jeans here, back again, bringing you guys some more competitive ranked double battles for Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet. In today's video, we're going to be showcasing a choice Scarf Chandelure team on the rank ladder. You guys already know the deal. If you do enjoy the content anytime, make sure you support me as a content creator by leaving a like on today's video. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, click that big red subscribe button so you know when all of my videos go live. But this team right here was actually sent to me over on Twitter, and the person who sent it to me informed me that this team was from the Poke Sports Discord community. So huge shout out to Poke Sports' channel and their Discord community for making this team. We'll be linking their channel down in the description below alongside with their Discord. So if you guys want to go grab their Poke Pace, it will be over there. But like I mentioned, we're using Chandelure today, and Chandelure is one of my favorite out of the returning Pokemon. I really like this Pokemon, and I just love it on the competitive scene. So it's going to be super fun to use them on the rank ladder, considering I already used them on the casual ladder, and it rocked out pretty well. But Alola Ninetales is going to be our first Pokemon for today's team preview, and Alola Ninetales you're going to be seeing a ton of. It's great with weather control, it's a great special attacker, and it's a great Pokemon for setting up a War Veil. It's got Snow Warning with a Light Clay, Blizzard, Moonblast, Protect, and a War Veil for its four moves. In our second slot, we're rocking out with the one and only, Chandelure. Ghost and Fire type with Flash, Fire, and the Choice Scarf. It's got Heat Wave, Shadow Ball, Energy Ball, and Trick to hand off that Choice Scarf item. We got Shen Pao in our third slot, and Shen Pao is going to be a perfect Pokemon pairing up with the physical attackers such as Warren Moon, Ogre Pond, and Scizor. Shen Pao's got Swords of Ruin, with the Focus Sash has item, Iso Crash Protect, Sucker Punch, and Sacred Sword. In our third slot, we got, or not third slot, in our fourth slot, we got Warring Moon over here. And we actually just used Warring Moon in my last video, and this Pokemon thrived out super well. It's got Protosynthesis with the Booster Energy, Acrobatics, Knockoff, Protect, and Tailwind. In our fifth slot, is going to be Scissor. And like I said, this Pokemon pairs up perfectly with Shen Pao, making it do a ton of damage. It's got Technician with the Clear Amulet, and then Bullet Punch, Dual Wing Beat, Pounce, and Sword Stance. In our final slot, we got the best regulation E Pokemon, and that is going to be Ogre Pond, with Water Absorb and the Wellspring Mask, Rocking Ivy Cudgel, Horn Leech, Follow Me, and Spike Shield for arguably the best move set for any Ogre Pond. Guys, you want to rent this team for yourself? Rental code is at the top right hand corner, but let's get after it. Let's hop on that ranked double ladder. Let's grab some wins with the Chandelure ranked team. First match on its way for today's video, and we're going up against a Wind Rider Sift Tree team alongside with the Flame Mask Ogre Pond, and then they're rocking out with Torkoal for a nice little bit of sun control. That could be Chlorophyll Sift Tree instead of Wind Rider Sift Tree, but I think it's going to be Wind Rider. But how should I play this one? Who should I go into? I think trying to set up a Warvel turn one could be really good, but the problem would be weather, and I don't think I really want to deal with that. So, you know what? I'm going to go Chandelure for the lead. I think it's just a solid lead all around. I can lead it alongside with a Pokemon, maybe like Ogre Pond, and just start getting after it. Or just go Tailwind Control with Roar Moon. I think that's your best bet. So I'm going to go Roar Moon. I'm going to go in with Chandelure, and then in the back end, bring Shen Pao and Scissor, or Shen Pao and Ogre Pond. What would I rather have? Scissor has the Bullet Punch, and I saw first turn priority, but Ogre Pond hits a bit harder. And the problem with Ogre Pond would be if they set the Sun. The sun's going to be a tad bit of an issue. Do I just go Scissor instead? Because again, Scissor's got that bull punch. It's got the dual wing beat. It's really, really hard. I kind of like the Scissor. I kind of like the Scissor. Considering it's going to be super effective onto the Shift Tree. Onto the Ogre Pond. I like it a lot. And then first turn priority is just such a big factor. It really is. Especially if they're going to go Tailwind with their Tornados. Which I think they're going to do. And I go to, uh, Tailwind with my uh, Boron Moon. Kind of cancel out. So first turn priority. Going to be massive. It is going to be massive. So we'll see who they end up leading here. I'm kind of curious. I'm kind of curious, but the way I've been playing Tailwind recently has been actually waste wait out a turn, especially more so with Tornado because you have Prankster. But if you can waste out a turn and then set up the Tailwind, it really works out well. But he ends up going Torkoal. I have Flash Fire, which is pretty nice for my boy. He's gonna end up drowning. So I get the Protosynthesis boost, which is beautiful. My speed's gonna get boosted up, and from here, I just think I simply pop a Heat Wave, right? I think a simple heat wave is going to be your play. And then do I terrestrialize you maybe into flying? I think I'm just going to protect you turn one. Let the heat wave thrive, right? Because I can see maybe like a terrestrialization coming out from the rhetorical. But at that point, I would just flash fire up. But I doubt he's going for a solar beam into, into Shandalur. And I highly doubt you're rocking Earth Power. I'd be upset if you're rocking Earth Power rhetorical. That'd be very upsetting. I can see this thing being like Choice Spect or something like that. He's gonna set the weather turn one. He's gonna end up withdrawing the Torkoal, which is totally fine. So the Torkoal gets the withdrawal, and let's see who they end up going into. 
Who are you going into? <clears throat> You're gonna go into Dragonite. The Dragonite comes out here. That's good. We can't be getting hit by uh, E Speed, which is good. With Shannon Lore, at least. And that Tailwind's gonna come out here. That's totally fine. If I can set up a Tailwind next turn, that'd be massive. But here I'm gonna pop a Heat Wave in the drought and doing some massive damage. Did we get some burns? No burns come out here. This thing is gonna be left over. So we take off as a multi scale. That is definitely multi scale. And we're staying choice into Heat Wave, which is beautiful. So I'll Heat Wave up again. I'm gonna go for a Tailwind setup here. Do I Terrestrialize? Mm, maybe? Probably? Yeah, I'm gonna Terrestrialize just so we can almost guarantee us getting off this Tailwind. If I get off this tailwind, then I have booster energy speed boosted. I can take speed for the rest of the time. And plus, we will be stacking tailwinds a turn after, meaning at the end of their tailwind, our tailwind will still be up. So I would love to get off tailwind for, for uh, the next four turns for us. We can really get thriving. So the tailwind's gonna come out here. We outspeed regardless with the booster energy. That's insane. Now I have the choice scarf. Heat wave's gonna land through here. We are going to take out the Tornadus and we are gonna deal some damage onto the Dragonite. This Dragonite might not even be multi scale. This one just might be that bulky. No burn comes out here and EQ's gonna fly. So good thing we did Terra or War Moon. And can you eat that up, Shandle? You can eat it up. We love you, Shandle. So I'm choosing the Heat Wave right now. I'm just gonna keep throwing them. Right, just do as much damage as I can. It's already working out very well for us. And now we can just like spam acrobatics into the Dragonite slot. They have some great Pokemon in the back end too. We know they have Torkoal. Now are they gonna go back into Torkoal? I'm not too worried about Torkoal. I mean Torkoal's a little bit of a problem. But no, they're gonna go into Ogre Pond here. So Ogre Pond comes out here. I think they have a chance of Spiky Shielding. So I'm just gonna go Heat Wave and I'm just gonna acrobatics the Dragonite slot. I'm just gonna double down into the acrobat slots because a lot of Ogre Ponds, or what, at least in my experience, when going after Ogre Ponds, a lot of them just, like, use Spiky Shield a lot. Like, it's a problem. Because it's such a good move. And Ogre Ponds, one of those Pokemon where, like, you want to target down a lot, so having Spiky Shield on that is just so big. It really is. It's just an upgraded protect. It does damage to physical attacking Pokemon. So we'll see what they want to do. They could end up terrestrializing and putting the mask on. Might end up seeing that. We might not. And no, he's just going to E-Speed me. Okay, so we actually could have just taken out the Ogre Pond. And that really hurts. That really hurts. We could have just taken out the Ogre Pond. But instead, we're going after Dragonite. We're doing a nice chunk of damage. We had a nice crit, too. So crit comes out. Heat Wave's flying. Should still do a nice damage onto Ogre Pond. And we get rid of the Dragonite, which is massive. It is massive. Dragonite's gone. If I can have Chandelure for one more turn, we're going to thrive. And he's going to go for the Sword Sands. And this is where we pretty much start getting after. Because if we can land Heat Wave onto Ogre Pond, that's going to be game. It's just going to take him out, and Torkoal's going to come out here as well. Plus, Weather's almost done, so I still have back end Pokemon. And I, s oh, I was going to say, I still have Terra, but I don't. But I do not. So we're choice in the Heat Wave. We're just going to spam it, and on top of that, just go into another Acrobatics. I can see them cancel the battle. Let's see what they end up doing. Maybe Hearth Flame Mashkin? But I feel like Sword Dance on Ogre Prime is just like... There's just no need for it, right? Yeah, if you're going to mask up, you already get the plus one. The plus two with the sword stance is just like, there's no need for it. It's just a waste of a turn because Ogre Pond already hits so hard with his plus one attack boost. He's going to embody aspect. I don't believe he has a first turn prior to me. I hope not, right? And Acrobat's going to fly. We are going after you. Heat Wave should still take out the Ogre Pond if it lands. I believe it should, right? Yeah, cool. And Shannon Lord's just killing it, naturally. They set the sun for it. Once they set the sun, I was just like, all right, looks like we're spamming heat waves. I don't care that's not very effective. It's still chunking up some nice damage all around. It's stab. It's in the sun. We love it. They end up going for an eruption. Shannon Lord got that flash fire, and we almost get the sweep. Oh, no, we are going to get the sweep. 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 Dope. Awesome. Cool. Sweep incoming for the boy. I thought that was going to take out War Moon, but I forgot that eruption goes off of uh, your HP that you have. So us doing some nice damage to it. Makes us neglect it and uh we kill it. That's number one. Go into BE sweep. We're just gonna do spam a heat wave here and go into another acrobatics. And actually I realized why acrobatics isn't doing that much. We still have our booster energy. We still have our booster energy, which is hilarious considering they set the sun, so our booster energy never popped. But we start off 1-0, we still kill it. Let's go hop to our second match. 
Second match coming at you guys, and we got ourselves a nice hot start in match number one. Going 1-0, and now we're going up against a Water Ogre Pond team with Frigorath, Tornadus, Fluttermane, uh, what is that, Shen Pao, and then last but not least, Rillaboom. So, Rillaboom's going to be pretty powerful here. I really do like Chandelure yet again. Chandelure thrived out in match number one, and I like it here. I like the Heat Wave spam. It is perfect. I think it's going to be great. So, I'm going to go here. I'm not going to go Nine Tails, considering Nine Tails can just get kind of ripped up on if Tornadus comes out here and sets up the rain dance i feel like nine tails is really used for war bell and spam and blizzard so we need snow and weather control in order to do that and i just don't trust it with the tornado so i'm going to stay with that i think i'm going to stay with the moon i really do like that lead especially with for tailwind so i'm going to do that we're going to bring shen pao in the back end and then last but not least we're going to go in with scissor i like scissor a bit more than wellspring or upon in this matchup considering bullet punch and first turn priority is going to be super effective onto the shen pao and onto the flutter main so having scissors is going to be elite here so i'm going to take in the same squad i believe it's the same squad as the last one or well, at least the same lead and we're gonna look to grab ourselves a win here and go back to back but yeah that first match it was just the uh the chandelure and war moon show they just took over but i don't really see us sweeping again like that in this matchup so we'll probably see back in pokemon a good bit but he ends up going into ogre so ogre pond's gonna come out here and potentially ogre pond might just throw on a mask right it might just throw on the mask correct so i might just terrasilize here and just choice in the energy ball which i really like i really do like that and then pop a tailwind i think that's gonna be your best bet yeah i'm definitely gonna do that but I, have a, I, have a, I have a huge feeling that ogre pond just sets up the mask and he goes after my shin so if they're gonna terrasilize straight water we're gonna terrasilize grass that's my thought process and then just throw an energy ball right into the face so we'll see how this one plays out here so right now I'm terrestrializing. I do my animation first because my Chandelure is faster. We're hoping. We're hoping they're terrestrializing. I'd be surprised if not, right? I'd be very surprised if not. If not, I do like the Grass Terror regardless. And yeah, like I said, you know, they're putting on the mask all day. They're putting the mask on all day. We've seen this coming from a mile away. So we have the perfect Terror type to actually counter that. They can go into an Ivy Cudgel and we should be able to soak it up. We should be able to get after it that way. I could see Tailwind popping from him as well. So I'm just matching the Tailwinds here. I'm just matching the Tailwinds. The Tailwind comes out from him. I think Ivy Cub is going to attack. You should be able to soak this up, Chandler. But again, it is... It is Ogre Pond. And Ogre Pond does a ridiculous amount of damage. So we have the perfect Terra type for that. And yeah, you're soaking all day. See, that still does a huge chunk of damage. Tailwind comes out from me to match the speed. And then from here... You get off a nice big time energy ball, which I don't know if it's going to KO. It should do a nice chunk of damage. I don't think it KOs. Or so, I love it. I love it. Nice little Chandelure getting after it. Yeah, that's some big time damage. We love that damage. Special defense drop comes out. And from here, we should be able to outspeed you now. So I'm just going to do that. And then I'm just going to do acrobatics this slot right here. So now my Pokemon's got some speed cooking. He's going to end up spiky shield. I'm looking just to KO my uh, Chandelure. That's totally fine if you do. I feel like we got off a lot of value onto that. Zacrobatics does half. Energy Ball comes out here. And then probably a Bleak Wind Storm, right? A nice, lovely Bleak Wind Storm. Yep, there's Bleak Wind Storm. Who's dodging? Shandle? Shandle dodging. That's a big time dodge, Shandle. Shandle came to play today. Shandle was like, it's my chance to showcase myself in ranked battles. I'm going to show out. So we're choice into that move. We're just going to spam acrobatics. We're just going to spam energy ball. We're going to see what they're going to do. Because potential swap rate. They could definitely swap. I wish I wasn't choice. But I, I kind of want to read the swap and go for a swap. But I just don't think that's the play, right? I don't want to. I have the upper hand right now. I don't want to force force a play and try to make a read that's not there. So I'm just going to keep spamming my attacks. He's just going to set up a rain dance. So rain dance comes out here. Kind of a dumb turn, right? Unless you're setting up for later Pokemon. But Acrobat's gonna fly here. That's gonna KO you. My Chandelure's Choice Scarf. We Tailwind canceled out, so Chandelure's gonna go next. And say bye. Bye to Overpod. So massive turn for us. Massive turn for us. Hot start. Yo, dude, Chandelure and War Moon are ripping. I said it in the beginning. I was just like, we're probably not gonna sweep as easily as we did like in match number one, but it's looking pretty good. We are killing it. That's a hot start for us. That's a hot start. I love the Chandelure and uh, Warm Moon lead. They're just thriving together today. It's just absurd. It is absurd, but yo, Chewy Scarf Chandelure is where it's at. Thing is a monster. He's like that. He's kind of like a Heatran of Regulation E. 
But now comes Fluttermane. I'm not worried about that. I'm not worried about Fluttermane. And Rillaboom's gonna come out here. I'm not even close to being worried about uh, Fluttermane. I got the Sizzle in the back end. The one and only Sizzle. Then I got Shen Pao. The chances are they're gonna Terrasilize here. I think we just throw a simple Energy Ball into the slot. And then from here, we just go for an Acrobatics into the Rillaboom slot. Try and deal as much damage as we possibly can. Dragon back to the fire. They don't have terror type. Perfect, lovely. Energy ball is gonna be cooking. And they're probably picking up a double KO here, right? I would assume so. And wow, yo, that KO is doing so much damage in the terrain. Moonblast comes out here. That's gonna KO me. That's fine. I just bring out scissor here. And that's game it's game set match. We got this in a bag. We got this in a bag, no problem. What are you going for, Robin? A nice little U-turn to KO. Okay, that's fine. That's totally fine. But yo, that energy ball did some damage in the grassy terrain. But yeah, I love Chandler's textures in this game. It looks so good. Like, you can see through it a little bit and then see the flame in the middle. It just looks so perfect. So they're probably sitting there, they're like, hey, maybe I have a chance until I bring out the God Squad in the back end. Scissor and Shen Pao will have first turn priority. I can see them canceling and not even playing a turn after I send out these Pokemon. But yeah, dude, Shamble or Roar Moon really carrying us into these videos so far. We're, we're about to be 2-0. Out comes Shiny Scissor just to rub it in a little bit. And a little bit of Shen Pao action. Beautiful. We love it. We love it. Sword of Ruin. Coming out here. Uh, at this point, we just... We just sucker punch instead of like... Actually, I mean, it's fine. Just go for an Ice Over Crash. I was going to say, we might want to go for a higher accuracy move, but I think we're fine. I think we are fine. So I'm just gonna go bull punch here. I'm gonna go for an ISO crash, and there it is. Like I said, they're gonna cancel the battle, which they do. We start off 2 0. Final match? Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's try to grab ourselves a nice little 3 0 perfect record for today's video. And we're going up against a Nine Tails team. So you know what? I'm bringing my Nine Tails. If you're gonna set a War Bill, I'm setting up a War Bill. I just think that's too perfect. And on top of that, we are going to bring in Chandelure for a nice level lead. Chandelure has been killing it for us in today's video. Why not stop here? Why not stop at match number two? You know, let's bring this one in the match number three. Keep using it and rock out with it. But they have Heatran. They also have the Ogre Pond, which could be a little bit of a problem. And then Crest. Crest is a nice little problem too. So maybe we might not bring more Moon. I feel as we have a lot of speed on top of that. But I'm just going to go Shen Pao alongside with Wellspring Ogre Pond. Lock it in, lock it down. Let's look to grab ourselves a win here and a perfect record. But yeah, Shen has been insanely strong and this is why i love this pokemon it was really good in sword and shield and it's typing alongside with flash fire everything about it it's just great and now add terror on top of that you can really dodge some typing so pokemon with flash fire i feel like have a huge advantage in this game considering you can just terror grass and then take away one of your weaknesses with flash fire it's just very very big so that's why like heat train and chandelor are so strong within the metas at the game right now they're just like an uh uh I wouldn't say a mid Pokemon, but like a staple Pokemon. That's like not going to be terrible for you. Like you can't go wrong with it. So again, Flash Fire Pokemon just really thrive out in this game, especially with the Terra Grass. So we'll see who who they end up leading. And it's probably going to be Nine Tails or something. Yeah, Nine Tails Crest. That's totally fine. And at this point, I set up a War Bell, and I might just choice into uh, I might just choice into what's it called Shadow Ball or Heat Wave. Shadow Ball or Heat Wave. I think Shadow Ball is going to be nice just to try to get rid of the Crest. So, you know what? I am going to go in the Shadow Ball here. That's my best bet. Yeah. We're definitely going to need something to take out the Crest. Shadow Ball is going to do some big time damage. And I love it. So Shadow Ball coming out here. Half in damage on the Crest. We all know that's a lot. And we get a special defense drop, which is beautiful and lovely. They set up an Aura Veil. We're doing the same thing. But mine's like that. So, hopefully, yours is not like that. That would mean I would get three more turns of Aura Veil later. And Trick Room with Dagger. So Trick Room alongside with that. I probably should have read the Trick Room and just threw a Choice Scarf onto Crest or something. That would be my best bet. But from here, I guess I can just simply go for a Moon Blast and a Shadow Ball this way. Or I could Hard Swap. Hmm. I think we just thrive out with Shadow Ball. And I knew it. I knew they were going to Hard Swap somebody. I was thinking more so the Crest. Now that would have been a solid turn for us to actually just go into uh, the hard swap my what's it called? My Shandalore and reset my choice. 
But it actually works out fine because I think we're going for a Heat Wave. The Moon Blast comes in there and does one damage. And we get a special attack shot, which is actually pretty big. But good thing I'm sticking with Shadow Ball. Maybe this can KO with a special defense drop. And of course, they're living on one. They are living on one. So from here, I'm just going to throw a Blizzard. And mm, do we think Lunar Bustin's again? Maybe, maybe not. I'm gonna say no. I'm gonna say no. So I'm just gonna Shadow Ball into the Heat Train slot. They could potentially just Ally switch here. Well, so yeah, I don't, I don't really see a Lunar Bust here. But I feel like they think I'm just gonna spam a Shadow Ball into that slot. So why would they Lunar Bust to get one HP back? I just don't see it happening. I see, I see more of a withdrawal than anything. Or just letting this, the, uh, if I was them, I would just let the uh, Cresselia die out so I can get some trick room turns. So Heat Wave's gonna come out here. I do got love with a little Flash Fire, and that is going to do some damage on the Nine Tails. And he's just gonna go for a Moon Blast. So, like I said, no Lunar Boss, and that's totally fine. Blizzard will be able to take out, of course, they get the special attack drop just like us. The game usually evens out, and we end up taking out the Crest. So we get rid of Crest, we say bye bye. Shadow Ball is going to fly into this slot. And I really wish I wasn't choosing the Shadow Ball at this point. I mean, it's probably best, especially going up against Heatran. But Heatran's just a bulky mess right now. Especially in a War Belt, it's just killing it. So I might just target down everything except for Heatran. Iron Bundle comes out here. Little scary. Definitely a little scary. And Speed's gonna get heightened. So Shan. Mm. Tough news here. Real tough news. Do I hard swap? If you're going for Hydro Pump, I might hard swap. I mean, we are in Trick Room. Actually, yeah, we are in Trick Room, so I might as well just attack. I might as well attack. I forgot. We are in Trick Room here. Earth Power is going to come out here. We're going to be able to soak that. Iron Bundle should go last here. Moon Blast is going to come out here. And Shadow Ball is also going to Okay, so we're chunking up some nice damage here. Iron Bundle probably got... Ooh, we almost KO'd it. I was going to say, probably going to KO my Chandelure, but we dodged the Hydro Pump. That's massive. So Trick Room is really not helping him out at all. Trick Room is really not helping him out at all. But from here, I go Moon Blast. I'm going to send my Shadow Ball over into the Heatran slot, just in case Iron Bundle protects, which is very likely here. So I don't want to double down to Pokemon that's likely to protect. I don't know they get some value off on this turn, but Trick Room really just doing them dirty, right? They're just, Trick Room's just not thriving with them. It really isn't. They send out their last and final Pokemon, and it's gonna be Ninetales, and I should've known that. They swapped out. Now Flash Cannon's gonna come in here and take out my Ninetales. That's fine. I'm waiting for them to add something because I'm kinda curious to when Trick Room ends, but they should add something that uh, lets you see like the turns of things when you're swapping into Pokemon. So I would love to see how many turns are left in Trick Room. I think this might be the last one. Yeah, okay, cool. It ended anyway. But there should be a screen here, right here, where you can see all the turns of everything. So from here, I think we just go into Wellspring Ogre Pond. Right? Yeah, and we hit the mask. And I think at this point, we hard swap Chandelure and we reset our choice. I think resetting our choice is going to be the play. Because I should just do this. An Ivy Cudgel. And I kind of want to go into Heatran, but they still have Terra, I believe, correct? Yeah, they still have Terra, which would now be like the perfect turn to Terra in the grass. So I'm just going to Ivy Cudgel into Ninetales, and I'm just going to hard swap into Shen Pao. Just so I get that, uh, the Swords of Ruin boost and all that. So we'll see what they want to do. If they go for, I doubt they're going for a Heat Wave here, right? Really doubt they're going for a Heat Wave. Flash Cannon, maybe? That'd be kind of lucky if they flash cannon into the Shen Pao slot. Because I would I would highly doubt they go for it. would more so be an Earth Power, which still kind of sucks, but a War Bell will help us soak. Then Ivy Cudgel should do a nice chunk of damage. But I see he's trying to Terrasalize, and that's why I'm going after the Nine Tails slot. A nice little mask put on time. In the third and final battle, we get out Ogre Pond. We put on, put on the big time Wellspring mask, which looks sick. It's so cool how they kind of added this in the DLC because it, it, it's something slightly different that adds to the uh, ranked gameplay or competitive season. Whereas they never really did anything like this before, right? Usually like every single season in the older games were like the same in ranked play. But this makes it slightly different because there's, there's like five Pokemon that could do something that other Pokemon cannot. 
So it's really cool. It's really cool. Moonblast is going to have to go into the Ogre Pond slot. He ends up going into Grass Typing. We read that all day. That's why we're going after Ninetales. And we're hitting this thing really hard. Insanely hard. Trigger and Focus Ash. And they don't have a War Bell anymore, which is actually really big. We still have it for a couple more turns. Earth Power is going to come into that slot. We're able to soak really well. And from here, we can now just go Horn Leech, finish you off, and just Iso Crash the slot. I'm all about it. We're killing it. We're killing it today. Just thriving out today. Everything's just working perfectly for us. So we say bye bye to Heatran. We get out the perfect Pokemon. And Ogre Pond's just going to pretty much wrap up this battle, right? Do they have anybody in the back end? Yeah, they still have the Iron Bundle, I believe. And we're able to soak that Moonblast, too. Horn Leech comes out here. See you later. And all they have left is the Iron Bundle. So from here, I'm just going to Horn Leech it on top of a nice little Sucker Punch. Pretty much wraps up the game, right? Wraps up today's video. A little bit of 3-0 action. Come on, mate. That's too easy. That's way too easy. That's way too easy. Way too easy, man. Way too easy. And we still have Shandle with the choice uh, scarf in the back end. So from here, I just go Horn Leech. Nice little sucker punch. They're definitely canceling the battle. That's no problem. 3 0 for today's video. Chandelure, absolutely killing it in today's video. Choice scarf Chandelure, I should say. Top tier, we led it in all three battles and it just dominated and went from there. We also had Pokemon like Shen Pao, Scissor, Ogre Pond, paired up really well and got some work done. Nine Tails and War Moon also came in a couple battles and got after it, which we absolutely love. But guys, that is going to be it for today's video. If you did enjoy the content, don't forget to smash that like button for me. And if you're new here, click that big red subscribe button so you know when all of my videos go live. Seriously, you guys rock out. Make sure you spread positive today, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out, everybody.